Howard here again with uh, Gimme Shelter from the Stones, of course, and uh, this one requires a little verbal explanation out the gate, so bear with me on the uh, word dribble, <laughs> okay? Uh, if you just want to shoot ahead to the uh, tutorial, feel free, uh, but first things first, we're in an open E tuning, okay? So the uh, sixth string stays at its normal pitch of E, the A string goes up a whole step to B, the D string goes up a whole step to E, and the uh, G string goes up a half step to G sharp, and the B string and the E string, the first two strings, stay exactly the same as they are in a normal tuning, okay? So a couple of things here, okay, out the gate. Um, I'm going to do this tutorial basically playing it as close as possible to the way Keith does on the original recording, but keeping in mind <laughs> that his style is anything but super precise, super succinct, all those words, you know, that, that make it really defined. Uh, his playing is extremely loose. There's a lot of little ad-libbing and improvisation that goes on. So I'm going to try to capture as much of that as I can in the tab for you and from the performance that I just did. And also, <laughs> Keith doesn't play it like this live. So there you go, right? I mean, you can pull up 10, 15, 20 videos of the Stones playing Gimme Shelter. And Keith won't be playing it like he did on this original recording, okay? In later performances, I would say within the last, whatever, few years, four or five years, he doesn't even seem to be playing it in an open E tuning, so there you go. But I love the open E tuning, and uh, I will try to get as close to the original recording as possible. And uh, what I would normally do with my students, I would just break it down into three or four specific riffs that you can play. But again, this is a uh, YouTube tutorial, so here we go. Now, another thing to point out is that Keith is using a uh, probably a Fender amp, I'm guessing, with the built-in tremolo from way back when. A cool, nice effect. And uh, I don't have an old vintage Fender amp with tremolo in it, but I use something called a Kamisi tremolo pedal. This little puppy is just awesome. It really captures that sound. <laughs> sweet and I'll put a picture of it right up on the screen for you so you can see the settings that I'm using um, this isn't an endorsement for them or anything they don't pay me I just love this pedal and it's literally about 20 or 25 bucks okay so here we go with the actual tutorial now one thing you're definitely gonna be doing with this tune is you're gonna be barring a lot <laughs> okay so uh, but you don't have to bar all six strings out the gate just start from the uh, fifth string down and uh, so you've got your first finger barred at the ninth fret, and then everything else kind of happens around that. That's your very first pattern. Hopefully you can see that on the tab okay. And you can pick it however you want to. I kind of use a little combination of cross picking, so to speak. We move down to the seventh fret, same idea, barring, and it's going to be that same thing where you've got this finger here and this finger here, eighth fret, ninth fret. Up here you have the tenth and the eleventh. And now we're going to play. I'll do that 
again slow. And then we move to the fifth fret, and you can play this like this, by the way, you can play it. I play it like that with these fingers. Hopefully you can see that pretty clearly on the tab, but here it is again, nice and slow. Move back to the seventh fret. And that's sort of your transitional chord in between. So what we have for the first pattern is and along with the tremolo if you really want to get a good Keith sound so to speak apply a little bit of palm muting not too heavy you know uh, just a bit So now we move to the next pattern, and the next pattern happens twice, okay? He's going to play it two times. Let me do that one again for you. Then we move down to the seventh fret. It's similar but slightly different. time on that one and then we get to the fifth fret it's the same as it was before same at the seventh fret as well okay so the whole second pattern which again gets played twice on the recording is played like so Now the next pattern moves around a little bit more. It's got a little bit more of a melody in it, okay? And it is played like this. And you can see that both of those were exactly the same at the ninth fret and then at the seventh fret. So let me do that one really slow as well, and uh, hopefully the uh, tab will make it very clear what I'm doing. So you're just walking that melody right there. The exact same thing at both the ninth and the seventh fret. Now when we get to the part that we did before, uh, you switch from the D and the G string to play the riff. You play it once like that and then so he's just sort of bringing it down toward your feet so to speak on the uh, G and the B string. And I'll do that really slow and again uh, hopefully the tab will make it very clear what I'm playing. Again, the transition at the 7th fret is exactly the same as it has been all along. So let me do that again super slow. And you'll play that whole thing twice as well. finally bring in the sixth string for the final pattern that he plays before the song just busts wide open. So 
so what we're doing now is we're doing the same bar. We're at the ninth fret, but now we're bringing in all six strings. Uh, we're barring all six strings, but we're not actually playing all six strings. So this pattern is probably the easiest of the bunch, and it goes like this. <laughs> see it's exactly the same at the 7th fret as it is at the ninth. And you can kind of put the open string, like I said, this is a really loose guitar style, so don't get too caught up in super particulars, just try to keep it loose and uh, with a lot of personality and attitude. get to that part, again, we're including the sixth string now. That's the cutoff point on that riff before he plays the open strings. So um, you're kind of playing four to five strings, but since you're barring across all six of them, if you happen to strike the first string with your pick, you're cool, you're good to go, all right? So it's open five, open five, open seven, open seven. And then nine, okay? Uh, so uh, once you get to the ninth fret, we're into kind of a uh, Chuck Berry uh, boogie pattern. six strings there and this is the way I play it this is the way I hear it on the recording rather than just single notes um, so uh, you're barring across the ninth fret and that rhythm in your right hand can vary a lot it does throughout the recording you know anything like that will work as long as you catch these riffs right here so for that, I'm mainly uh, hitting the A string and the D string. But uh, if you happen to hit the B string or whatever as well, it's still going to sound cool, right? So again, 12th fret on the uh, A and the D string, including the G or the B or whatever, <laughs> if you want to, and back to the bar. And then classic stones, uh, second finger on the 10th fret on the G string. And then the uh, ring finger is pegging the A string at the 11th fret. Just, that's the stones, right? So you put that together and you have... And then you'll hear this. So that's, I just use my pinky for that, but it's still the same idea. At the 12th fret on the A string. So putting that whole riff together then, we have... And then we move into the chorus of the song, and this is where you'll start using these open strings a lot to just kind of put the three bar chords together. So there is a definite rhythm on that. So I'm going down, down, up, down, down, down. And then you can kind of hit the open strings as you make your way to the seventh fret, and again as you make your way to the fifth fret. Exact same thing as you did before, open five, open five, open seven, open seven. So you can see on the second time through the chorus, 
the second phrase through the chorus, uh, he adds the chord we were just talking about, classic stones. see on the uh, one of the fifth fret he just keeps it the same as he did before so then the whole chorus is played like this to the boogie pattern and then the whole song just goes back and forth between the boogie riff and the chorus and there you have it give me shelter from the stones there's a lot of great lead guitar work in this song as well there's fills throughout the whole thing and it has a really tasty solo as well uh, and a great intro but uh, this video would be three hours long <laughs> possibly if I included all that in this so uh, if you guys want the lead I'll do a, a completely separate video on that just covering all the fills the intro the solos everything okay all right thanks for watching as always and uh if you haven't already please take the time to subscribe hit the like button ring a bell maybe even start a band <laughs>